All right, guys, I'm going to show you our seven figure growth systems to sell both coaching and agency offers. And I'm going to do this while skipping the TikTok dances that you're probably doing right now in order to get attention while introducing leverage and through simple $25 per day ads that you can create from your iPhone. You probably see that this is going to be a long video. So I really do recommend that you watch this at 2x speed because you don't want to lose any of the information that I'm going to be sharing in here, but you want to make sure that you move as, f as fast as possible. Does that make sense? And also, this is going to be just a high level overview of the document that I'm going to be presenting. If you want to get this document, you can get it with the link in the description, but more on that later. This is a client acquisition infrastructure that can be executed even if you have zero experience with advertising. Number one, or number two, organically through value-based album prospecting, like you will learn in this document. I'm also going to be showing you our proprietary auto-converting funnel and ads, as well as the micro VSLs that we create on YouTube and re then redistribute across social media content to keep a focused content creation pipeline, as well as actually nurturing all of our prospects. Make sense? First of all, I just want to make sure that we take everything out of the way so that you know that what I'm going to show you actually does work. This is an example of our of one of our ads that produced 51k cash from $627 in ad spend. Okay, this is literally the ad that I run. Nothing else, nothing fancy. And just to show you that this is not some BS, we actually do this done for you for our clients. These are some examples of some of those ads that we do for them. Like you can see, it's super simple. And of course, this is just one of those type of ads. We do four or five different types of funnels depending on the level of the scale, the niche, etc. But you get my point. I'm also going to be giving for free what my copycats are charging you exactly 7.5K after watching my DM ads YouTube videos that you can watch for free on my YouTube channel. And last but not least, I just want to make sure that I get things straight from the get go. Because yes, I do have something to sell you. You're interested in the implementation of what you're going to learn in this document in a done for you slash done with you fashion. But I don't run an information business where I just sell the information, okay? Royland, our company, is a consulting and growth management hybrid agency where the value that we provide to clients doesn't come from the course material or the information that you're going to get, but from the done for you execution of these systems that you're going to learn in here, as well as the campaign management and all of the good jazz when it comes to the long-term partnership that we have for clients. So I would literally not be handling anything back when it comes to the information that is being shared. And also, so that I can make a put, put this out across, this is specifically made for people who have at least a little bit of experience in the trenches, okay? For example, you made a couple of sales, you already booked a couple of meetings, and now you're looking to scale your, your existing offer. For complete beginners, there's a link in the description that is going to essentially show you how you can license our systems, get your first to next five to 10 clients so that you can actually get to 10, 15K per month so that we can then partner in this done for you offer that I just mentioned. But again, too much for me, let's just get started with a video, okay? So here's the, our cash collected over a 30 day period when we were running a simple coaching slash recruitment offer. This is just one of our offers. This is just one month. You can see here 48K and other plus other payments coming through wire transfers. And you can see here over a one month time frame, May 1, May 1st, all the way to May 31st, uh, $626 in spend. okay? So you can see this is a funnel that you can use without needing that much budget in order, in order to run, okay? Most importantly, you don't have to trust my word on this. You can go and read and watch some of my, our case studies and client testimonials, including the link to the actual videos and podcasts so, to see the full conversations, because of course, I don't want you just to trust the sketchy, you know, screenshots. You can actually go and watch the interviews with my clients, okay? So case study number one, Ernie Johnson started an appointment setting agency for coaches from scratch and took it to 16K in the first 92 days after working together. Then two months after the interview, he actually did crack the 50K cash in a single month. Okay, you can see here before and after in the interview. Case study number two, Nishkar Chagarwal, we helped him reframe his short-form content agency's positioning and overall offer. And he made 15K MRR in under 14 weeks. You can go and watch the interview there. Case study number three, Mark Wayne is called his coaching business for Christian entrepreneurs, passed that 10K per month mark in his first month, plus a quick 5K win in the first 48 hours after joining with our low-hanging food campaigns. My guy, Danes, as a complete beginner, he started his whole email legion agency from zero and made 6K and booked 30 sales calls in the first 20 days after joining the program. His niche B2B companies, time frame 7K in the first 20 days as a complete beginner with no previous business experience, okay? You can see here, uh, he's saying that we're on track to becoming one of the best programs for coaches, consultants, and agencies. And ultimately, again, like I could charge you with a whole bunch of different stuff. I will just leave all of this in the description, but you can see here literally 40 pages worth of uh, client results, case studies, testimonials, etc. Like literally, you can entertain yourself reading all of this. So let's just begin so that I'm respectful of your time, okay? So the first thing that we need to get clear on is who is this for? Because what I'll show you inside of this product is specifically for you, only if you run a marketing agency or some sort of coaching slash consulting business or high ticket information essentially, and you're looking to scale your existing offer without sending more cold DMs, 
posting on other people's Facebook groups with no need to have a big audience and without needing to enter the short form content hamster wheel while simultaneously building an audience of buyers that compounds over time. For example, you wanted to take a vacation, you want to start running ads and you have your Instagram or your LinkedIn or your Facebook group, you're literally just one post away from getting customers. Make sense? That's what we want to help you do. Maybe you want to revamp or create version 2.0 of your current offer in a way that cuts through the noise and allows you to immediately become a category of one in your market, even if you don't have savage case studies. Okay, of course it helps if you, if you do, but no need for them. Number three, you're looking to start slash launch a done for you marketing offer, like some sort of SMMA lead generation agency, email marketing, etc., or some sort of done with you coaching slash consulting business, but you're not sure how to move forward or make that first step to create an offer and have confidence selling it. Make sense? And ultimately, you are a smart guy who knows all of the ups and downs of marketing, sales funnels, content creation, etc. But you start, you still struggle to get clients. Okay, you know, you've been watching all of my videos, all of the other guys' YouTube videos, and you know about everything. You know about this YouTube funnel, about the follower ads, about all of these magic, the magical things that everybody nowadays is selling you. But you still struggle to get clients at the end of the day. Make sense? And you start to feel a little bit of resentment seeing a Latino dude from Costa Rica pulling seven figure run rates while you are still stuck in the trenches figuring it out. Okay? And that Latino dude from Costa Rica, obviously, is me. Okay? So, if, if you are one of these people, let's just continue watching with the video. Everybody else, you are still welcome, but this is not going to be specifically made for you. So what I want to do now is talk about the different scaling models and the decision fatigue. Because before I walk you through our process, I need you to know that I understand what you're thinking and what you're going through right now. Okay? So it's now starting to become a trend to use paid ads to sell companies. Nowadays, one year ago, everybody was like, hey, you're, you need to be doing cold email. You need to be doing cold outbound, like 1,000 DMs per day. And But listen, yeah, yeah, that's super important. And as a matter of fact, I do recommend that you do all of that, especially when you're in the organic validation phase where you're needed to get customers for free or cheap, okay? And you start to have more money than you start to have time, then that's when you want to scale their company leveraging paid advertising, okay? And don't worry, we're going to cover everything from when you should start running ads, all of that good jazz. And for the things that I'm not going to cover so deep in this video, you can, again, in this document that I'm presenting right now, you see you're going to have access to some YouTube videos, other resources, appointment setting scripts, and all of that good jazz, okay? So no worries about anything. Now, the problem is that the money with paid ads is not made with the advertising in itself. As a matter of fact, Frank Kern was the, first, the person who said, everybody can generate leads, what matters and, what the, and the magic lies in you being able to convert those leads into book calls and paying clients. So what I'm going to show you is not going to be only on how to actually run the adver advertising in itself, but the actual conversion mechanisms that exist in the backend to convert the attention into cash. And right now you're in front of a lot of opportunities. You might be thinking, hey man, should I be scaled? Should I start scaling an album sales team? Should I go all in on content creation? Should I start to run paid ads, etc.? And realistically, all scaling models can work, but you need to be able to judge your, the, the different opportunity channels that you have, not so much on what you have to gain, but on what you have to lose. Okay, because everything can work, but you just need to think like, okay, what happens if I do this? Like the opportunity cost from not doing this hard thing. Make sense? So let me explain. Let's say that you wanted to scale through album prospecting, which is a viable option. Okay. Yeah, of course you get clients with little to no upfront investment outside of just scraping leads from databases who everybody reaches out to or other people's leads in the form of group members, followers, etc., who are already sold into one of your competitors anyways. Okay. And then what do you give? Okay. That's what you get. But what do you give? You give energy and time. If you're doing this yourself or you're doing a lot of energy managing your album sales and making sure that they perform there's a time when you gotta do this especially once you're, you're, you're leveraging other more scalable funnels where you need to be calling people um, reaching on different platforms a lot of good jazz but i'm talking here for, to the guy that is making 5 to 15k per month what's the best way in which you can go around this okay so this is the first way if you wanted to scale through our organic content and another viable option here's what's going to happen you're going to get easy closes from pre-sold leads with no upfront cost but what you gotta give is Listen, energy and time, and a lot of it, okay? For example, you're going to be waiting for your organic content to start compounding and being able to sustain, sustain your life extremely from organic content is going to be honestly really hard. And this is on top of keeping up with consistent uploading schedule for a long period of time without seeing a clear ROI from your efforts. And listen, even if organic, even for beginners, plays a huge role in client acquisition, but mostly as a lead nurturing tool, but listen, and listen, I'm, I love content and I'm all about content, but about the right type of content, aka long-form type of content that indoctrinates people into your belief system. And ultimately, 
You want to use, especially at the beginning, no content as a lead nurturing tool, not so much as a lead generation tool, if that makes sense. And last but not least, you have paid advertising. And if you're looking to start one of the paid funnels that most people are preaching nowadays, what you get is the following. You get clients whenever you want and predictable traffic in your stuff. This is, of course, assuming that you build the proper messaging, the ad creative and the funnel, which is really, really hard to, to crack. So that means that in order for you to get this, you need to give something in exchange. And guess what that is? It's money, which is perfectly fine if you know that per $1 investment, you get at least $10 back. Make sense? The problem is that most funnels are hard, hard to crack if you don't know how to run paid ads. And my promise is that you're going to learn the type of ads that you can start running for as little as $20, $25 per day are going to still be wildly profitable, okay? So now that we covered the three ways in which you can scale your companies, like we'll say later, these vehicles don't have to be black or white. You can combine them. And that's actually what we, what we do with our auto converting funnel. But whenever you're building a strategy for client acquisition, you always be primarily relying on one of these three. What I just walked you guys over is like the black and white scenario of what you're thinking about right now. Okay. So let me just break down something because right now you have three assets that you could leverage in order when deciding which type of funnel to run. So the first one is time and time is something you'll never get back. Therefore, wasting any unnecessary amount of it is just priceless, especially when you consider leverage activities. The second thing is energy and energy is something that you will always spend anyways, but it's up to you to decide what you will be investing it in. Okay. Consider that prospecting, even if important, is more of a numbers game more than anything else. So if you decide to use your time in this, you'll, you'll, you'll be trapped in doing BA level activities. Okay. So just want you to take that, in, that into consideration. And then last but not least, you have money and money is something that you can always make a lot more of especially when you apply a proven process that you can get qualified and interest in email leads for as low as half a dollar to ten dollars each as you can see here okay for, for this is an actual extension from one of our campaigns where we're paying two dollars three dollars per lead in facebook on instagram ultimately regardless of the path that you decide to take you're either spending your time your energy or your money so it's up to you to decide that you want to trade time and energy for money in which case you might as well just get a job since the leverage of even running a business in the first place is non-existent or you can think like a business business owner and start to leverage capital for, you guessed it, more capital. Make sense? So if you plan on scaling any offer, you need to be able to have a lever that you can pull and immediately get results. And yes, album prospecting is something that you can always pull to get more of, meaning that if you were to scale with that, okay, album prospecting, the added complexity steals your time while reducing the profits through the management of bigger and bigger prospecting teams. Make sense? So even if you can definitely scale, and I'm not saying, I'm not talking trash about Outbound, like I myself built my entire business on a foundation of Outbound. Guys, it's the best way to go from zero to five, 10 K per month. But again, once you're looking to scale past that, you want to start adding leverage while not neglecting the album activity that you're already doing. Okay. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Having said this, guys, what do I mean when I'm talking about results, how we get results from our, you know, sales activities, the system that we produce where we can have a lever that we can pull need to consistently bring new attention, like actually getting attention or lead generation in the form of book calls and also converting that attention. Okay. So one thing is getting the attention and another thing is converting that attention. So for example, getting that attention is going to be in the form of book calls and then we also need to consistently have a, a protocol or a vehicle to convert those book calls into new clients which is actually the conversion make sense the, we need to have consistency in both things not only in one because people can say yeah run ads but then they, they get a lot of attention but they struggle on the back end converting it or they have a proven way to convert attention but they are relying just on organic or on processes that simply don't execute on the right inputs to eventually convert more people through the more attention that we got in the first place. Make sense? So you think about it, paid ads are a modern day miracle that allows you to go door knocking anywhere in the world by the simple touch of a button. And at the end of the day, paid ads are one of those things that you either crack or you die trying, okay? Paul Gordon, which is one of the biggest guys in the info space, says that 99% of those people, the way they scale to seven figures is through paid ads. Yeah, they might have different funnels, etc., but all of them crack paid ads. The people who never get to seven figures are those people who never crack paid ads. This is why actually understanding advertising and deciding which is the most profitable funnel, depending on your niche and your service line, all of the good jobs, your own unique skill set, your, your protocols, etc., is so important because why you're always going to be relying on some sort of human capital in order for you to execute on the processes. Make sense? So we need to actually have a machine and a system that runs without you. Okay. So that's the problem with Outbound for, for escalation, if that makes sense. So all you need is to have a proper funnel slash strategy to channel the traffic that paid ads yield. And at this point, we already know that cracking ads is the key to scaling a high ticket info and, if, and, and agency offers, but we're still left to figure out a way to maximize conversion and securing our positive ROAS. Let's talk about some of the most common and trending client acquisition funnels out there and measure the pros and cons of each. The most common funnel that people are running nowadays is direct VSL funnels. 
And be a self owner is phenomenal when you have a, a strong social proof, organic content foundation, and most importantly, you have dialed messaging. But even then, it's, it's low converting unless you bring a team of setters calling the opt-ins, which adds a lot of complexity to your operations. And these funnels can work at scale later on and can be easily applied to our platforms once you get them right. For example, the VSL funnel you can use on TikTok ads, with Facebook ads, with Twitter ads, etc. But that should be after the 100k per month mark, since operationally, it's also your focus, especially at the beginning stages where you're really figuring out, you know, the messaging, all that good jazz, okay? So, for example, Nick Cosman promotes this, Cole Gordon promotes this, Rabia Bobada promotes this, Kai Bax promotes this, etc. Okay? Essentially, you run an ad which has a long conversion to people getting a customer, and the actual, you know, micro step by step plan is like you see an ad, a percentage of people um, opt into a business funnel, a percentage of people book a call, a percentage of people become a client. Okay? The second way is IG shoutouts, follower ads, or audience building ads. And these are the most lead to cost effective only if you consider that all of your followers are leads which is at the same time the problem of this type of ads, okay? At its core, these ads, these ads are meant to simply pay for eyeballs to see your stuff, like we discussed before, through traffic ads, and then through the use of content, stories, personality, etc., you can convert these leads slash traffic into paying customers over time, which is great, especially since most people's buying decisions anywhere are going to be more towards personality slash brand-wise approach, instead of just like the transactional, hey, my offer is this, my warranty is this, pay me 10K, okay? So the only downside to this type of ads are the following, or to these funnels. Number one, you will not be able to track a clear ROAS that's specifically attributed to your campaigns. That's why we recommend to use these ads on top of your DM slash foundation and sales letter distributing ads like we'll see later on, of course, and also um, the leads from ads that I do recommend for people who are just beginners. And listen, these ads work phenomenally well, don't get me wrong, if you combine them with the auto-converting form that we'll see later on, so, so that these leads can start going through a, conversa a conversion journey that makes them become clients where you're having to kill, quote unquote, your audience by sending them DMs after they follow. Okay. Truth be told, this is not so much of a problem. If you're getting more money in than you're getting out. But number two, if you want to maximize slash squeeze the use from this approach, you need to be creating a, a fast-paced content inside of a platform that you're using. Okay. So, for example, you're using Instagram as, as your way to run follower ads. You're going to be needing to post short from content, a lot of tweets, a lot of stuff inside of the platform that you decide to ultimately choose, right? So the process this look, so the process looks like you have your ads, a percentage of people visit your profile, a percentage of people follow you. And then once people follow you, you start your appointment setting flows. Some people who promote this type of funnels are Brandon Forbes, Richard Yu, Trey Cogram, Jeremy Polk, etc. The third type of funnels is one of my favorites, to be honest, is um, what, what is called the Facebook group slash community funnels. And Facebook groups are a fantastic way to build community and allow your leads to experience for free what your paid stuff would look like, um, while at the same time allowing you to build an email list. Let me just see what's happening with my, my microphone. Cool. Um, as a matter of fact, I have an entire playlist on how to grow, engage, and monetize a Facebook group. You can find it with a link in the description. If you do a good job with the front-end experience of your group, you'll have more clients that you know what to do with, especially since people buy on the expected value they've received from you both in your content and your auto-converting funnel and you guys at your community. So if you get this right, people are going to be so in love with you and your solution that they're going to inevitably end up buying. So for the longest time, I used to sell my previous coaching offer through a Facebook funnel, and I still do, in full transparency, a lot. And I think that that's best, the best way to get clients, especially if you're doing some sort of B2B offer. And, but for B2C, I do recommend Twitter. Sorry, Instagram. And listen, again, I just have an entire playlist that you can go and watch or you can read the entire 50-page um, document that I have on how to do the Facebook group thing, okay? Now, the biggest problem with this funnel is simply that it doesn't allow you to build a personal brand outside of the community. And if you actually want to manage it effectively, you need to add some email marketing flows and the cost per group member can be a little bit higher than the audience building slash the mass that we'll soon discuss, etc. That's the only problem with this type of funnel, but outside of that is phenomenal. So let's see now how leveraging the auto combining funnel dif differs from some of the other trending paid ads funnels that we just covered, okay? So now I want to start talking about the auto converting funnel and how it combines the best of the, of the three worlds, okay? From organic content, from outbound, and from ads, okay? So drum rolls, please. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> What we've come to realize is that if we're able to leverage a single model to nurture leads and shake the beliefs of our traffic through organic content, element number one, allows for fast conversions in a personalized fashion through Avon slash manual appointment setting flows instead of email marketing sequences, number two, aka you leverage Avon, and the scalability and traffic that, and control that comes from paid advertising, element number three, paid ads, we'll be able to have a competitive advantage, not only in terms of customer acquisition, but also at a branding scale. 
And that's how auto converting funnels were born. Essentially, you combine the, the best thing out of all the different scaling protocols in a single place where you can now have focus. So you combine organic content with paid ads with manual appointment setting. And that's where auto converting funnels essentially destroy all of the other processes out there, okay? We'll soon break down how and why our auto converting funnel takes the best of sales letters, BSLs, growth ads to call traffic in community slash group funnels to initiate a never ending sales funnel that trumps all of the typical client acquisition funnels that you might have used so far. But before we do that, we need to get clear on the economics of this funnel in case you're still skeptical on this model, okay? So essentially the process is going to seem something like this. You're going to run your ads. People are going, you're going to start catching people's attention. If you do catch their attention, people check your profile. If you seem legit, they are going to engage in your DM ad. If the, then once people engage in your DM ad, you can have a clear ROI on how much your lead is costing you. Then if your DM ad hits a nerve, you're going to continue the appointment setting flow while at the same time it starts the auto conversion process on the automatically. And all of this leads up to people booking a call with you, being nurtured, okay? So let's play with the best case, worst case scenario with a 1K budget for simple math. Let's say the worst case scenario, you start running this ad, you are you're the, best, the worst advertiser on earth, you are the worst salesperson on earth, you have the worst everything that can happen. If you're able to convert, and again, this is with a 1K budget, if you're able to convert in the low end, just 15% of all of your auto converting leads to book sales calls, assuming that you're getting the most expensive leads, 10, $15 each. And by the way, this is way too much, right? But again, this is just for the sake of example. While selling a 5K product, here's how the math is going to play out. You have a 1K budget. This means that you generated 69 leads um, for a, you know, 14, $14.49 cost per lead. Then out of these 69 leads, you booked 11 sales calls, assuming that you're only booking calls with 16% of the people who engage with your ad, which is really, really low. Then out of these 11 calls, you actually end up taking eight. Let's say you have a 73% show up rate, which is average, normal. Out of these eight calls, you close two, which is 25% closer. That's 10K cash. And these are your immediate, listen guys, your immediate ROI metrics. Cost per lead, 14.49%. Cost per sales qualified uh, sales call, $91. Cost per acquisition, $500. Cash ROI, 10X. Revenue, um, yeah, 10X also in this case because it's two times paying in full. But even if they, both of them split their payments, that will still be a 5X ROAS, make sense? This is without considering the long-term nurturing effects that the auto conversion funnel allows you from the other 58 leads who didn't book a call with you yet and who will still get nurtured through your strict auto conversion structure that you're going to learn in a second, your Facebook group slash school slash Discord community, from your due to micro VSLs and distribution process in the next coming weeks and months and years, and the retargeting ads. Okay, did you see how powerful this is? And remember, all of these prospects who book calls with you are, not, are now nurtured and educated in your solution since they consume your foundation on sales letter the moment that they engage with your ad. More on this later. And now that was the worst case scenario. Now let's, let's look at a, at a realistic good case scenario. This is not like the best, this is like realistic, normal. Let's say you're able to convert 20% of all of the auto converting leads to book sales calls. Assuming you're getting $8 leads, which is still on the more expensive side, but still average while still selling a 5K product, here's how the might plays out. You have a, a budget of 1K, you start to have 125 leads, $8 cost per lead. You, from those 125 leads, you book 25 calls, 20% lead to call, call book rate. Out of those 25 book calls, let's say you took 20 because you have an 80% show up rate. Let's say you start, end up closing five, which is a 25% closing rate. That's cash, 25K, 25K. And this would be, in this case, your immediate ROI metrics. So cost per lead, $8, cost per sales qualified call, 40, cost per acquisition, 200, cash ROI, 25X ROAS, revenue ROI, 25X. Let's say that all of these people paid in installments just only half, that would be, uh, well, 12.5X ROAS on cash. You will, you'll be converting $1 into 25 which would allow for fast scale, making your only bottleneck to be the amount of sales code that you can take at any given time. And again, this is without considering the long-term clients that the auto conversion funnel will yield through the combination of content nurturing, community, and micro VSLs, okay? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I hope that this first 30 minutes hooked you into actually watching the rest of the video. And I hope that I actually have your attention now because we're just on the tip of the iceberg. This is going to be life-changing, I promise, okay guys? So, 
Just an intro, my name is Enrique Aquiles. I studied law in the fifth best ranked university in Latin America, the UCR, Universidad de Costa Rica. I got a scholarship to study abroad in European universities and got involved in the following research centers, uh, especially in Italy. I went and lived one year and a half in Italy. Quindi posso parlare l'italiano. But yeah, I've been involved in research centers such as Universidad de Costa Rica, Universidad de Historia de Genova, Universidad de Pisa, La Sapienza, Universidad de Roma, Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas, one of the founders of Cátedra Centroamericana de Derecho Romano. And guys, listen, the ways in which I can actually be of more, more value outside of this conversation, this video, whatever you're watching this, is by joining my free community, which is, of course, absolutely for free. You're going to get access to bonus mini course on how to implement this. My YouTube channel is essentially like a crunchy roll for you guys to consume business-related type of content. X, formerly Twitter, that's my most active social media platform where I'm spending most of my day, um, you know, hanging out, if that makes sense. And Instagram is just like where I share my personal stuff. And listen, this is my track record so far. I will just break down to this super quick. Like from 2020, I actually started in online entrepreneurship in 2020. And from 2020 to 2021, I started my first six, low six figures consulting business helping other people like other service providers move more millions through open prospecting. I literally used to run an appointment setting agency, okay? This is why I'm so good at booking appointments, like this is my thing, okay? Getting clients and delivering results was simple, but the problem for me at the time was organic traction and album prospecting, which is slow and often, oftentimes ineffective. You don't have a big audience or you don't have something to nurture your lead So it didn't sit well with me to simply sell clients on the consulting service since they needed to validate their offers, first of all post content and other people's communities, etc. So I decided to do something more done for you. So that's why at, in between 2021 and 2022, I built a called email and album automation lead generation agency for B2B SaaS and tech companies, okay? That name was SaaSQuest to 17 plus active customers while still managing SDRs, sales team for these companies. And I mean, it was just like nightmare, <laughs> nightmare mode for me, right? But I mean, we were able to scale that really, really profitable. And this is the done for you period of my career where I did all of the work for the clients and I learned important management skills to keep up the client work. And realistically, this was a great model to keep the recurring revenue coming in, lean teams and high profits. But the problem was that since we were seen as an outside agency, helping out in the marketing piece of the equation was always a little bit of a bureaucratic process and more often than not, a waste of time. But what it really helped me was to learn the interdependence between marketing and sales. That's literally what this agency had taught me and the need to integrate a single model that allows to communicate effectively with marketing and sales. And that's why I started to learn about the content part, about the paid ads part, not only the you know, outbound and closing part of the equation. And that's why on, in 2023, I started to build Royland. And Royland is a consulting and management agency, okay? And this is honestly something unique that no, nobody in the industry is doing because we run on a licensing model. So meaning that what we do is that we literally install the systems that you're le learning here across the marketing, content and paid traffic system and advertising system, more than 32 um, systems that we can place in our clients' companies. And then what we do is that we bought this content marketing ads and sales systems inside of your business. And if they work, they will, you will make money and will get paid. And if they don't, you don't pay and you keep the systems. Okay, that's what it, look, what it means. And to warranty the results, we actually co-manage the campaigns on a one-to-one -one basis while, of course, keeping some of the recurring revenue so that we can actually help with the um, ongoing support of the systems, okay? One year ago, I realized that most people don't have a marketing or a sales problem. What they have is an operational problem that prevents them from executing on their strategy consistently at scale or both. And that's the problem we're looking to solve for our clients with Royland while getting as close to a 100% success rate as humanly possible, okay? And through the leverage of e-learning products that allow you to move faster and learn about our proprietary systems at your own pace, at Royland, we don't simply send information, we literally just sell the transfer through the license of the systems and the co-management of the campaigns. And the system you learn in this document is exactly going to show you what we've been able, how we've been able to add over 2.4, this is actually not updated, but it's more like 2.6 million dollars for clients in a, using this simple four-step process that you're about to learn in this exact minute, okay? But so far, if you've been enjoying this video, you get any piece of value whatsoever, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share this in your stories because this should be like a webinar, honestly, and just tag me and I'll be happy to just Richard on my stories on Twitter, whatever it might be. And that's it, guys. Let's just begin with the video and let's get started right away because this is going to get absolutely disgustingly good. All right, guys, the third part of this process is going to be literally just discussing the auto-converting funnel and the automated appointment setting implementation program, okay? Because there are four steps to effectively leverage paid ads to your advantage using auto-converting funnels while automating this process from A to C by hiring a commission-based appointment setter or marketing development rep or marketing rep, MDR, etc. And here's the process in a nutshell, okay? So what you're going to do is craft your foundational positioning, which is your sales messaging and offer alignment, 
Then based on that, you're going to write a foundational sales letter. You're going to leverage copywriting principles, et cetera. And inside of that foundational sales letter, you're going to incorporate organic content so that people have like some sort of distribution spider web across the internet. And then you gotta ask yourself the question of, hey, is the foundational position invalidated? Because if it is, then you're going to start install the auto-converting funnel that you're going to learn here, then you unleash appointment setters and then you scale massively. If the foundational position is not validated, organic validation, and then reinvest the profits in the actual installment of the auto-converting funnel. Okay, that's a processing in a nutshell. In the first two steps, the foundational positioning and the foundational sales level build, are meant to warranty that when we run ads, we're going to be profitable 100% of the time by validating our assets first in a risk-free environment through organic slash album prospecting, and then use the cash that we collect for paid ads at scale distribution, okay? The third step is understanding and installing our auto-converting funnel. Fourth step is bringing Ninja appointment setters to automate this process. Let's see every step in depth. So the first thing, like I was mentioning, is craft the foundational positioning slash write foundational sales letter. Here's how most people go about creating their business foundational positioning which is again, like I was saying before, the offer plus the sales messaging plus the offer to market communication. What they do is that they first decide what to sell, then they decide how to sell it, aka the conversion mechanism, and at the end, they figure out how, who to sell it to, aka the niche. Literally the opposite of what should be done. <laughs> so what ends up happening is that every single coaching agency has like an irresistible offer, but they literally aren't able to sell it, and then on the flip side, our clients sell 10K deals without warranties, okay? That's what happens. Most people believe that a good offer is simply adding a money back warranty on top of a desired outcome when you send your cold emails. And if that was the case, everyone would have a full calendar, especially since nowadays everyone plus their grandma has an irresistible offer, like I was saying. So if you want to make client acquisition easy, what you wanna do is literally the opposite of what the majority of people are doing. So you gotta, first of all, decide the group of people you want to serve, aka your niche, what are their problems? Then you develop a sales messaging that attracts them that go like, oh shit, man, like this guy is literally doing the thing that I've always been waiting for. Then based on the messaging and the marketing that generated appointments and attention from this group of people, you're going to align your offer to the desires of the market. And then based on all of these insights, you're going to write your foundation on sales letter. Make sense? So the niche problems are super easy to detect because now we're going in this first step in here, right? So principle one in business is that you'll never make a profit if you're not solving problems in one way, shape, or form, meaning that if you're not going deep into the understanding of a painful problem for a group of people, it doesn't matter what your offer is or what you sell, you'll never get anyone to buy. That's why the first step is all about identifying the group of people that you'll serve with your business so that then we can get crystal clear on the problems that this group of people have, okay? So um, here's the thing, guys, you have your niche, right? And what most people do is that they say randomly pick, they randomly pick a niche and they go and say like, okay, I will help gym owners, okay? And that's your niche. But what ends up happening from here is that you need to be a little bit more strategic with your process, okay? Because you cannot decide your niche positively, but negatively, okay? So instead, what I encourage people to do is just start with a broader niche, and then as you start to gather insights from outbound or from ads or whatever you're doing, in this case, normally from, from outbound, you start to know what type of people you cannot work with or who people, which type of people don't resonate with what you're work, working with, okay? So if you have your entire fitness niche, for example, what you start doing is to develop what I call the negative segmentation, okay? So based on this negative segmentation, you know that, for example, dietitians you cannot work with, you know that doctors, then you realize like, hey, uh, you cannot help gyms, you can't also help, um, I don't know, whatever, you get my point, you negatively segment the, the industry. And then based on this, you end up with what I call a marketing worthy niche. Like it's just like select group of people that are very close together, one from the other, that ultimately allow you to, you know, be like, okay, I can help fitness coaches and also dietitians that help this type of group of people. And they are, they are similar in one way, shape or form. Then you realize like not only all type, type of fitness coaches, maybe it's fitness coaches that help people gain weight or build their muscle mass or increase their strength, like all of those type of fitness coaches. And then you start to dive deeper, but it's through negative segmentation. Make sense? Once you're clear on the marketing worthy niche, next step is deciding the most powerful problem that these people have and that you can solve for them. Because that's important. It's not only what problems they have, it's which problems they have, but that you can also solve for them. This is gonna be a painful problem and just not just a nice to have. So level one is understanding the niche specific problems and pain points. So you grab your micro niche, which is one of the specific, I mean, which is just like the specific group of people group of people inside of the marketing worthy niche. Then to this micro niche, you're going to start understanding the pain points of this micro niche, specifically this micro niche. And that's level one. Most people stop here, right? And this is actually a lot to ask. Look how deep you gotta go. Level two, now that you understand the pains, is understanding the niche specific problems these people have relating to market sophistication level. 
Okay, this is deep. Like this is something that I, pr I promise you, you've never heard before, almost. Okay, so let's say that people have. I mean, let's just. I mean, of course, I don't know any industry. I can. I know my industry for a, for a fact. So let's say that I'm helping B 2 C coaches that sell productivity or some sort of time management solution. They might have the first pain, which is not getting enough traffic. In regards to that specific problem, they are actually problem unaware. They just think that they have a sales call type of problem. When in reality, what they are lacking is the traffic. You see, so the pain is this, but they are probably unaware on that. Pain number. Let's say that another pain is that um, they say, "Hey, I just don't close my meetings." But, but maybe the fact is not that they are struggling with their sales process. It's more that they are struggling with some sort of conversion nurturing pre-call, so that they can actually buy or their prospects can actually buy. Sorry. So they might have that pain, which is not closing, but it's not a solution aware that the problem is actually not on the sales call, but in pre the sales call. Make sense? And all of these problems have their own sophistication levels. And ultimately, here's where the money is made. Because level three is understanding niche-specific problems and pain points relating to market sophistication levels so that you can understand your marketing and positioning strategy to raise leads interest. Okay? So how, what does this mean? It means that based on this information that you gathered on their pains and their sophistication levels, now you develop mechanisms and processes and frameworks and messaging that solves literally all of those and enhances the perceived value of what you are ultimately going to do if you were to work together. But it's only by understanding these pains. And listen, most people do, what most people think is that their offer is what solves all of this. And of course, the offer is what solves all of this. But most people think that by having just the offer, solving all of this, you're going to ultimately get clients. And that's not a solution. You need to communicate that pre-call so that people even get interest in the first place to even book a call and ultimately pitch your offer, which is ultimately what your product does. Make sense? So that's why this is so important to crack. And the only way you're going to crack this is by what we're going to see in a second is the actual fund foundational sales letter because the foundational sales letter communicates all of this in depth and makes people go like, oh shit, man, like this guy knows what he's talking about, okay? So for example, if you're reading this document or you've been watching this video for, I don't know, 30 minutes, you already know that I know what you're, I'm talking about because I've been able to speak to you in such a way that you go like, oh shit, this guy is reading my mind and he knows me more than I know myself and that's because I do and that's because I literally do this for a living, right? So but the point I'm trying to make is I know what this is like and this process is literally what it takes for you to build compelling copywriting messaging and marketing. Make sense? So this is where the money is made, guys. Don't skip over that. And if you're asking yourself about why niche, why niche to select, all niches work if you work. And the best niche is the one that you can stay 25% plus years focused on helping, meaning that the key lesson is not to overthink this, okay? Just get started and you'll figure things out in the way. The next step is developing sales messaging and offer alignment because what we've learned through countless iterations and helping dozens of people solve the client acquisition problem is that it's your sales messaging, not your offer, what makes booking calls and closing deals easy. And once you're on the sales call, it's the alignment of the offer that you are pitching to the sales messaging that generated the meeting in the first place, what makes the offer, the offer actually be resistible and not the other way around. Make sense? And the reason why most people struggle to book calls and get clients is because their entire business is modeled after copy-paste content, offers, niches, meaning that even if you have all of the traffic in the world, you'll never be able to convert it to the actual cash if you're selling commoditized services or offers or whatever it might be, and you don't have a unique touch to the service that you're providing, hence why the identification of niche-specific problems is important, okay? Naturally, the question becomes how you can communicate the exact sales messaging to your niche in a way that gets them excited to reply and engage with your marketing so that you can generate appointments on demand. And let me introduce you to what we call foundational selling content. Okay, the foundational sales letter is like the main way in which you actually personify the, the foundational sales content, but you get my point. To kickstart your client acquisition journey, you need some piece of content that will support, and the keyword in here is support your growth campaigns, either advanced or paid, and fasten the conversion windows of your clients or your client acquisition efforts. And the beauty is that once you validate this process, this foundational selling content or this foundational sales letter, once you validated that through Almond, then you, you can 100% rest assured that it's also going to work with paid ads, assuming that you're having the right funnel and the right strategy, okay? So that's why at this point, your content will not be Instagram Reels. And if you're doing that, you're stupid. It shouldn't be TikToks. It shouldn't be YouTube Shorts or anything like that. It's going to be long-form video on YouTube, or like we like to call them micro VSLs, and long-form Google Docs, like the one you're reading right now, or the one that I'm reading right now to you guys in this video, or like we'll call them foundational sales letters. And this is now where we start talking about the thing that matters, okay? This is where the money is made, guys. Like, don't skip over this. It's boring. People laugh at me when I say this, but it's true. I will make a few million just 
writing Google Docs, okay? This will test different headlines, marketing claims, and will showcase your offer pillars slash features slash benefits in different ways, shape or, shapes or form for people to engage with you, okay? And a deeper explanation of this process can be found in the other video that I have here, that is how to get coaching and agency clients with organic content, because otherwise, this video is going to be super long, okay? But essentially, your foundation, what you're going to do is you build your foundational positioning. Like we already discussed it, your sales messaging and offer alignment. Based on that, you write your foundational sales letter. So once you write the foundational sales letter, inside of the foundational sales letter, you're going to record micro VSLs. And it's going to be foundational micro VSL 1, micro VSL 2, micro VSL 3. And each one is going to cover a different pillar for your offer. And that's only something that I only stitch to clients because honestly, otherwise, again, this video is going to be super, super long. But your offers are going to have different pillars or milestones or steps that you're going to essentially pitch. And then what you got to do is create one micro VSL per pillar. And the foundational sales letter contains all of the three pillars, okay? And then you distribute all of the micro VSLs and social media channels to optimize conversions. And based on this written foundational sales letter with the micro VSLs inside, you're going to launch your growth campaigns, whether organic or paid, and, based, and iterate based on the feedback that foundational sales letter. Make sense? That's how you go around it. Um, well, honestly, I recommend that you guys go and watch these other videos on how to use YouTube micro VSLs to get clients and the one on organic content, etc. because again, otherwise this video is going to be super long, but yeah, this, essentially those videos demonstrate how YouTube is the only platform that the longer time, the more time goes by, the more views your content gets, and ultimately when you grow on YouTube, you grow everywhere, and it's just like a flywheel effect, okay? Essentially, the effort that it requires through Twitter content, TikTok content, threads content, Instagram content, Facebook content to get someone from cold lead to happy client can be three months, but if you leverage some YouTube bangers or YouTube micro VSLs, it might be three days, okay? That's how easy it is, and the beauty of YouTube is that you can easily repurpose this into your favorite platform for your, for your prospects consumption, okay? So yeah, guys, honestly, I could talk about all of this, but honestly, yeah, it's going to be super long if I continue doing all of this. In this document, I also walk you guys through uh, orga organic BSL distribution. For example, once you record your micro BSL on YouTube, how to go around distributing it on Facebook, on Instagram, on posts. <laughs> I don't know what, what I meant by that, but on your share from content, in, in Twitter, um, deep, on LinkedIn, on email blasts, etc. And in that other video that I mentioned on the organic content to get clients for your coaching slash agency business, um, I also walked you guys about the written process, um, about the process on writing the foundational analysis letter in itself and the energy of a foundational analysis letter. And I just want to stop here really, really quick to explain because this is something important, otherwise the rest of the process is not going to make sense. Listen, if the content that you create is energy in social media, your foundational sales letter is the equivalent to gamma ray burst when it comes to the impact that you can have in your marketplace by maximizing awareness, interest, conversion, and of course, sales, okay? Why gamma ray bursts? Well, because I made a Google search and I literally asked Google, what is the most powerful energy in the universe? And the, and the response was gamma ray bursts. So that's why foundational sales letters are gamma ray, gamma ray bursts <laughs> when it comes to conversions, okay? Essentially, your foundational analysis letter is a document that contains not only all of your foundational micro VSLs, but also includes headlines, unique useful insights, case studies, social media platforms, your Facebook group, call to actions, and of course, personality. An actual example of a foundational analysis letter, by the way, from my own business, and that I've used to get clients through ads, album prospecting, and inbound through content is the document they're reading right now, as a matter of fact, okay? So you can see that this Google Doc essentially contains Funnel opt-ins, it sends you to a whole bunch of YouTube micro VSLs, it has links to book meetings, it sends people to my LinkedIn, so if you like to use LinkedIn, you can connect with me. My LinkedIn sends people to the YouTube micro VSLs, it sends people to a Facebook group, from the Facebook group I send people to micro VSLs. Essentially, everything, every single marketing asset that is going to bring attention and convert attention and make people book meetings with me is going to depend on me actually writing an effective foundational sales letter. Make sense? And as you can see, the sales letter is dense and integrates all of your content marketing efforts, your communities, and any relevant asset that you can leverage so that your prospects can convert as fast and as efficiently as possible through the use of different types of media consumption. You can leverage communities, different social channels, video content, audio content, written content, case studies, your own touches on, to demonstrate personality, etc. And, and listen, the point of the foundational sales letter is that instead of you having to decide the best asset or the best uh, protocol or the best micro VSL to send to every single specific process, once we start talking about appointment setting and album prospecting, you can just send the foundational sales letter. And the foundational sales letter by itself is going to take someone from cold lead to happy client. Make sense? That's the power of it. Because if you're doing everything like, like spread or dividing the, breaking down the foundational sales letter in different stages, 
what it will take you for you to take someone from cold lead to call happy client is following up on LinkedIn, maybe reaching out to cold email, reaching out to Instagram, sending a YouTube micro VSL, sending a case story, and just the foundational sales letter includes everything. And the reason why I like to create foundational sales letters is that once it's done, you'll be able to leverage it, leverage it in your album campaigns for organic validation first. And once you make sales, you'll also be able to use it for your paid advertising, which allows for rapid scale distribution in the different social media channels and makes everything that comes after much, much easier, okay? The foundational seller is going to include a lot of things that maybe one part is going to be relevant for your prospects and another one not. What you gotta do is at the headline be the single thing that they want most. And if it's catching off and the hook is actually really good, they're, they're actually going to consume the rest and the entirety of the sales letter, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a one hour long video or if it's a 80 page Google Doc, okay? That's essentially the point I'm trying to make. So organic validation, guys. Once you're done writing your foundation on sales letter, it's time to use it to make sales and get clients. And if you have more, and if you have more than 5K in the bank that you are not using, you could simply skip this step and go straight up into the next section, which is going to be, um, well, how to run the ads themselves, okay? If you're on a budget or you simply prefer to play it safe and make sure that your foundation on sales letter is hitting a nerve before investing your money in paid ads, stick around for your section, okay? So your foundation on sales letter is going to be validated organically through album prospecting and based on that, and some organic content also, of course, and then based on that, you're going to get cash collected. From that cash collected, instead of seeing it as profit, see it as um, fuel for your company, okay? When it comes to organic validation, we're specifically talking about reaching out to prospects who don't know about us or about our offer and who, who are not educated. And what we'll do is leverage the foundation on sales letter that we create to immediately convert them from cold leads to customers. And before we continue with the document, just in radical transparency, nowadays we don't do any album prospecting whatsoever since we're leveraging paid ads and content like you learn in the next step. And because of the nature of our service line, we really don't look for more and more clients. We really just want to focus on installing this into a few selected clients, scale them to the moon, and just get profit shares and just the retainers. What I want you to know is that I used to run a cold email lead generation agency. These are, and like I was saying, these are the actual. So you can see here results from cold email 22% um, reply rates, 17% reply rates, 40% reply rates. I mean, if you leverage what you're going to learn in this section about album prospecting, it's going to make a massive difference, okay? And listen, my, preferred, my two preferred methods for album prospecting and that have yielded massive success for us and our clients are the following Number one, social media album prospecting. And I, you can see an entire YouTube video that I have about how to go about cold DMs or cold email if you're selling a B2B offer, of course. And you can see an entire uh, cold email course that I have um, absolutely for free inside of this document, okay? Now, if you want to win using cold, with cold prospecting campaigns, the trick is to leverage inbound marketing principles in your outbound sales efforts. Because if you think about it, leveraging content and offering lead magnets as our, our way to get people in the door and then once people give reply and they are more interested in what we have to offer, then we actually can pitch them in a way that is helpful, okay? The problem is that most people go direct for the jugular, right? So what this means is that if you're sending a straight sales messages, which can work really well, honestly, especially with cold email, depending on your niche, your offer, et cetera, but you're not getting as many replies as you'd like, try offering free stuff in the front end as lead magnets. And depending on the angle you're using, your lead magnet can be your foundation answers letter. Boom, easy, right? Let me tell you something though. Most people don't put as many efforts as they could, as they could on, their, on their lead magnets. For example, when I used to run my cold email lead generation agency that I was able to scale, listen guys, the way in which I get people to reply is I literally, since I was scraping, uh, since I was doing cold email as a service, what I did is I scraped uh, leads, a, a group of leads that I know that all of my clients would like to because they were like the ideal clients for tech companies in my niche, right? And what I did is I have had the list and I said, hey, recently stopped working with, with one of our clients who was going to, we were going to reach out to these companies. Are you looking to get clients? Because we have these leads. Do you want me to send them your way? They're going to be like, yeah, for sure. Then we connect with them on LinkedIn and I say, hey, this is the list of leads. We actually delivered the list of leads. And then we said, by the way, we run a cold email lead generation agency. We run on a paper call basis. Are you guys open to discuss a little bit on how maybe we can help you get these people as clients? They said, yes, we book meetings, we close them, boom. Okay, try to be, think outside of the box when it comes to the lead magnet for your album. If you're doing SEO, uh, something that used to work really well, I don't know nowadays to be honest, but something that used to work really well back in the day before ChatGPT is creating a list of block ideas and offer that as a lead magnet. You see, but think outside of the box essentially. These are actual numbers that we had in 4K email sent over a month's time offering foundation and sales letters to get our foot in the door. Think about it, how much your life would change if you had 800 people interested in what you have to offer using a $34 per month software. That's literally the results we had, okay? 
Now, think of the following approaches or the angles when creating your Avon prospecting campaigns, either on social media or cold email. You can do what I call direct sales based, and the goal is to have the prospect either show interest or not. The second way in which I like to start Avon campaigns is conversation starters, which are rapport based, and the goal is to get the person to respect to something that will then allow us to present our offer. The third option is the lead magnet, which is my favorite by far, but of course the hardest one to crack, depending on what you're offering, what your niche is. And the goal here is to prove competence beforehand. And pro tip, think about creative ways to scale using your lead magnet using AI. And fourth is unique approaches that you can come up with when this is more like creative based. And this is honestly, think outside of the box, okay? For example, something that I, that I used to do back in the day is I used to offer podcasts, okay? So what I said is, hey, I currently have, uh, back in the day I had like, three listeners per day, honestly, but I said, hey, I have a podcast where I currently get some listeners per day. We, we interview people in your niche. Are you open to come in? Then people said, yes, for sure, 100%. And then uh, after the podcast, I pitched them. Okay? <laughs> That's literally what I, what I did back in the day. Okay? So if it worked for me, it can work for you. What I recommend you guys do is watch this video where I break down our appointment setting framework for album prospecting before you continue with the training. Okay? Because Something that I did in doing album prospecting and appointment setting from album prospecting is you need to do volume outreach for cold leads and when people, someone replies positively, you add them to a CRM and then you manually book appointments with people who already demonstrated interest, okay? That's what you gotta do, okay? In that video, you're going to learn how to do it. And yeah, in that video, you're going to learn the division of labor inside of the sales process, especially how to separate attention generating through outbound and how a $3 per day BA can help you with that from attention conversion, which is appointment setting which is actually getting paid replies and getting, getting converted to sales calls in your calendar. Remember, even if this happened prospecting stage is a bit tricky since you'll be swimming against the current, going after colder prospects, it's supposed to be used to make quick cash, then put that into paid ads and stop relying on album prospecting, okay? That said, this doesn't mean that album prospecting sucks. Our clients use these principles mentioned above to close revenue with share deals with 240K e-commerce brands and even beginners close their first clients within five days of launching the campaigns, okay? So you can see here, uh, Suraf, one of my clients, crushing it with album prospecting campaigns. And another one of my clients, August, running an email marketing offer for e-commerce, closed a ref share deal with a 240K per year uh, brand, okay? So when it comes to album prospecting, the KPI you want to hit is depending on their platform, but essentially initial outreach, 100 new combos per day, 10% CRM ads, 20% book calls from CRM ad to book call, of course, and closing 25%, meaning that you can get one client per week at two calls per day in cold email to LinkedIn prospecting, because I mean, if you're doing cold email, you might as well do LinkedIn, okay? They go one hand in hand. And what I recommend you guys doing is, when it comes to cold email to LinkedIn prospecting, 150 new combos per day, minimum, okay? Um, out of those people, 5% should reply positively, okay? Not book calls, but replies. Then that should be 5%, of course. We should be seven to eight CRM ads per day. Then out of these seven to eight CRM ads, you want to have at least a 10% booking call rate, okay? So at least one to two calls booked every two days and closing should still be 25%, okay? And what I will do is I will leave a couple of tools that you can leverage for your album prospecting efforts. And you are going to get, for example, my free master CRM and a demo on how to use it. You're going to get my KPI tracker for album prospecting and how to use it. And I'm going to leave a video on how to fix a cold album campaign so that you can know what to fix, what to tweak, what, what to do when something is not working, okay? So far, we finished your organic validation phase. Hope that this, you're finding this video helpful, that you're liking what you're seeing right now. So now we're going to start talking about the auto-converting funnel and how to scale through paid ads, okay? Because paid advertising is something that you either crack or you are trying, like I said at the beginning. And especially as marketers, we need to master the art of paying a social media platform in exchange for attention and making a profit from it. And like any other skill, this is something that you're going to prove as time goes by. So what you're going to do is that from the cash collect that you got from your album campaigns and your organic validation, you're going to pour money into paid ads and the auto-converting funnel, and from there scale. Make sense? And all client acquisition requires to do something. So with album prospecting, you do time and calories for attention. Content marketing, you do value and time for attention. And paid advertising is money for attention. This means that paid advertising by far is the fastest and most predictable and scalable traffic slash attention generating channel we can leverage when growing our company. And we shouldn't be afraid to test this channel if we have a plan, because this is what typically stops more people from paying ads. Like if you were 100% guaranteed that you give me $1, I give you 10, would you give me a dollar? Of course, yes. And not only you're going to give me a dollar, you're going to put as, you're going to give me as many dollars as you can, right? Well, that's what paid ads is, but most people don't do it because they're afraid to, you know, lose in the process, okay? So for a detailed video on how to run paid ads, I would recommend that you guys uh, watch this video where I literally walk you through our process on how to transition from organic to paid and you know the ad spend or all that good jazz because otherwise the video is going to be super long. And if you're completely new to the paid ads world and you don't know how to set up paid ad campaigns and simply want to know where, how we do it, watch this other video where I literally explain our 33X ROAS setup that we've used countless and countless of times to 
basically have a positive ROAS every single single time, leveraging, you know, like actually setting up the ads manager, all of the good jazz, okay? Let's talk about understanding the auto-converting ads and funnels. Our auto-converting funnel strategy takes the best of sales letters and BSLs, growth ads to cold traffic and community slash group funnels to initiate a superior sales funnel that allows you to get clients easily without having to rely on album prospecting anymore while building an audience on demand so that you can get clients when you want, not only when you need, okay? So there are three main stages. So you have traffic, which comes come from organic or paid, which essentially send people to an auto-conversion process, okay? That can come in the, in the form of a DM request from a new follower. And based on this, the auto-converting funnel setup of the profile or the channel is going to get people to a content flywheel. Based on this content flywheel, you're going to start leveraging inbound book calls. And based on all the conversation, appointments, and inflows, you're going to send foundational sales letters. And this gets more people to book calls. So essentially, like this is a flywheel. And there are some elements found in the auto-conversion funnel that makes it unique and superior to everything else in the marketplace. And these are the components of the auto-converting funnel. So what makes an auto-converting funnel actually be an auto-converting funnel is number one, the lead identification and appointment setting capabilities. Number two, hybrid traffic channels. And number three, the strict auto-converting capability in itself, okay? So what I mean by the first one, which is like the appointment setting capabilities is that this funnel works on any platform as long as you have an entry point conversational like type of message, like for example, a message request or a new follower or a new connection or a new member and you have the messaging capabilities with your prospect to start appointment setting flows so that you can distribute your foundational sales letter. You see, you need to be able to identify the lead and send them at the end, that's the point. Similar to in how in BSL funnels, the landing pages can work on any advertising platform, the foundational sales letter will generate conversions in any platform as long as you can have conversions with your prospects, okay? And this is important for three main reasons. Number one, because social media conversational flows convert much better than simple SMS or email marketing sequences. Number two, because that allows us to track our leads in our sales CRM to further move people down the pipeline and get sales calls through DMs and follow-ups, essentially. Number three, because since we are now in a social media platform, not an email list, prospects can engage and consume more of our content and they have a face and a name. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, hybrid traffic channels means that we need to be able to get leads both organically and paid. Okay, so we get leads in an organic way that compounds, especially through native content and YouTube call to actions, and in a paid way, especially through DM ads or audience building ads. Okay. And last but not least, the actual strict auto-converting capability means the following. We already saw that there are two main ways we get traffic. It's organic and paid. And depending on the type of lead that we get, aka BM message request, if it was a DM ad or a new follower or both or whatever it might be, we'll be able to set up an auto-converting process that every single lead will go through. For DM ad leads, which is our, the primary way we recommend, especially for B2B, the foundation of the is going to do most of the heavy lifting, plus your profile setup, plus the micro VSLs pinned in your social profiles, it's going to do the heavy lifting, okay? For new followers, regardless if paid or free, your profile setup plus your micro VSL distribution. That's how you're going to auto convert your prospects. DM ads work better for B2B offers while audience building ads work better for B2C offers, okay? So now that we understand the three elements that make up an auto converting funnel, I now want to start talking about the first, second, and, ter and third or consequences of leveraging the auto converting funnel. So once we're running paid ads with clients following our approach, we're not only going to leverage a superior client acquisition model through micro VSLs, foundation answers letter, and appointment setting flows, aka the auto-converting funnel, but we're building a compounding flywheel that makes it hard not to get clients because listen to these guys, when you apply the auto-converting funnel and you set it up the right way, there are three main levels of compounding growth that happen if you do this right. And I want to break down every single one of these because so far, hopefully I literally convinced you that this is the best way to get customers. But now it's not only about how to get the customers, about the first, second, and third order consequences of the auto-converting funnel, not only your client acquisition, but also in your brand, in your community, and your online reputation with your entire industry, if that makes sense. First order consequence is what I call immediate client acquisition. And that's the most obvious one, right? And the first level of dynamics is that, of course, you build the auto-converting funnel, the auto-converting funnel in itself is a personality-based client acquisition flywheel that gets clients through paid advertising, DM ads and audience building ads, selling content, micro VSLs and organic content outside of the, inside of the platform, and appointment sending flows with people who engage with your ads content or who inbound book calls with you. Okay, so it's a flywheel effect in, in there already. Essentially, your day-to-day -day will be to live inside of your, one of your auto-converting funnels to book meetings, get clients, but the growth flywheel doesn't stop there. And that's where I want to introduce, to introduce you to the second order consequences, which is essentially a superior sales process. So guys, second order consequences is what I call a superior sales process, okay? Because what you're going to learn is that through the leverage of the auto-converting funnel, of course, of course that's a and this is the second level dynamics is, you have a you-based approach to client acquisition. Since you're building your brand and people know who you are and they visit you either on your LinkedIn profile, 
on your Twitter profile, on your Instagram profile, Facebook profile, whatever it might be, people engage with you and see you as authority, okay? But then, on top of this, you're able to simply conjugate other instances of interaction with your prospects, which can be like your foundation of selling content, which can be the YouTube channel, the podcast, you can have the community funnel, which is more them-based, okay? So not only do you have more opportunity channels, but you have a real extension that allows you to have a real superior sales process that doesn't stop only with your auto-converting funnel. And since we'll be creating weekly micro VSLs inside of our YouTube channel to build an organic audience and indirect communities like we saw in the Facebook group model, we'll start to leverage two of the most high con highly converting channels that exist in the agency slash info marketing space on top of the auto-converting funnel. Make sense? Masterful, in my opinion. So if the auto-converting funnel is where we'll get our clients and build our personal brand, then YouTube indoctrinates people into our world, the, does most of the heavy lifting and makes them fall in love with us. And number two, your community is an extension of your personal brand that on top of adding more nurturing to the sales process allows us to grow an email list to own our traffic and our leads and then have more touch points per prospect and squeeze more cash from our ad spend. That doesn't end there. There's still an extra bonus layer to this. And that's the third order consequences, which is now the unstoppable flywheel. Okay, guys, and this is where I get super excited because then it's an actual spider web of traffic and conversions that exist in social media, okay? Because then your auto-converting funnels grows your community, your community grows your auto-converting funnel, your auto-converting funnel sends people to your deep selling content, like on YouTube, your YouTube content sends people to the auto-converting funnel, YouTube content grows your community, your community grows your email list, your email list notifies about every single YouTube video, and this is just a flywheel effect that makes a whole bunch of transitions for people to end up becoming customers. And in the end, the proper execution of our complete system will result in the installation of four rapid compounding, compounding assets that make all of, all of the other ones grow. And at this point in time, you'll simply need to decide how much money you want to make, assuming that your basic skills are on KPI, like appointment setting, closing, content creation, and advertising. So now that we're done with the first, second, and third order consequences, hopefully I was able to convince you, not only that it's the best client acquisition method, but it also actually grows all of your possible assets. Now I want to talk about the components of the, of the auto converting ads and funnels so that you can set up this yourself, okay? So when it comes to the, to the traffic sources, you have basically the top of the funnel, which is what generates attention, and you can have that through organic or paid, okay? Organic is going to be native content inside of the auto converting funnel or YouTube call to actions. Paid is going to be messenger DM ads, audience building ads, or lead form ads, depending on the type of funnel. But for the lead form ads specifically, there's a, a different setup that I like to talk about in a separate video. So let's start with the paid sources because there are two main ads that you'll run to guarantee a, a positive ROAS. So it's going to be messenger slash DM ads where you'll distribute your foundational sales letter and follower ads that simply build your audience and allow you for compounding growth, okay? Let's see the conversion window and the process every single one of your clients is going to go through depending on the ad that you're running. For example, if you're doing a messenger slash DM ad, which is better for B2B type of offers, the benefit of using DM ads is that you'll have a clear direction and that you need to take your leads through to, to take your leads through the funnel. Essentially, every single lead you get from your DM ads starts with a simple combo conversational flow that you can use to get people on the phone while immediately out to convert your leads through the consumption of your foundational sales letter. And remember, the foundational sales letter includes links to your micro VSLs, to your Facebook group, different socials, etc., allowing you to punch hard and deliver a power, powerful front end spear to your prospect, if that makes sense, that makes someone go from call to sold through the mere consumption of the FSL, similar to this document. And this is going to be your bread and butter when it comes to paid ads and client acquisition, since it's simple to track the ROAS using a KPI tracker and the effectiveness of your messaging, which is already proven since you already use the same FSL early on through the organic validation process. So I can make this super, super clear. Look at this. You run the ads, right? So if you're doing DM ads, you, you have simple tracking inside of a CRM, and then you have a simple tracking of ROAS in one KPI sheet, right? Because let's let you start running DM ads. You know how much it's costing you to get a prospect to engage and start a new combo, Okay. And you can track that specifically to that uh, DM, if that makes sense. Then the combo makes people actually consume the FSL, the auto conversion begins, then they go through a content journey inside of the FSL. If needed, you go through the follow ups, and then a sale is made. So it's simple, linear, and it's easy to track. That's why I love DM ads. At a high level, on top, of, on top of keeping track of your leads, very easily, like we just mentioned, when it comes to producing a clear ROAS with DM ads, you can easily track the ad spend, the leads specifically from the ad campaign on follower ads. It's not clear if someone comes from YouTube, from the organic piece of content natively on the platform, from the ad, etc. It's hard to track the cost per lead, origin of the lead, if that makes sense. Then you have cost per lead, you have cost per book call, and it's easy to track also the cost of quarter like a customer. And all of this makes scaling easy, while at the same time, through the distribution of your FSL, you start to make prospects move 
along your different channels, further increasing your conversion rate percentage and virality your content marketing efforts. Okay, so some examples of DM ads that we've run, all of this. Okay, super super simple. Second example is the audience building ads, which is typically better for B two C offer or what I call low B two B. Low B two B is when you have a B two B offer that is something like three K or something, or you're selling to other businesses that are really just starting scaling, okay? For example, if you're selling to coaches doing 5K per month, I would consider that a B2C offer, honestly. Like, you could easily sell that for for using even Instagram shoutouts or this type of funnels. That's what I mean by low B2B. But that out of the way, guys, audience building ads are great to speed up the effectiveness of your organic content, while at the same time building more trust or awareness in your niche. But these are meant to be used on top of the messenger ads once you're getting a clear role from them. Make sense? And the good thing about follower ads is that through consistent content, CTAs, and appointment setting flows inside of the specific platform where you're going to be running your ads from, you'll be able to work longer conversion windows similar to what happens inside of your Facebook community, okay? So what ends up happening is that you run your audience building ads and, and then you start the auto conversion process, okay? The problem is that, again, it's hard to track everything unless you simply start messaging all of your followers, okay? Now, the problem with this type of ads is that there's no clear lead tracking format unless you were simply sending DMs to all, all of your new followers and conversations can lack a little bit of context when you start them if they only follow you without engaging or asking or anything. And that said, the good thing is that once you get a piece of content that gets tons of engagement or virality, you can simply boost the post to, the post to get more traffic to get to see your content and get followers for $5 or even half a dollar. That, of course, that over the course of days, weeks and months ends up converting into a paid customer. Even that you keep up your content cadence going and your store is up and running, okay? And the way you go about this is the following. Once you have a piece of content that gets more views or engagement than usual, you'll simply boost it and give it 5 to $10 a day to get more followers in your content. And this mentality applies to everything. It applies for Twitter, for Instagram, for LinkedIn, whatever it might be. Okay? So there are some examples of posts that you can track and that you can use. You already know that you need a YouTube channel and a Facebook group community to fortune nurture your leads. But when it comes to the auto-conversion funnel, you'll choose a single platform to focus on completely. And that can be like your Instagram profile, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Facebook group, okay? What I would recommend for most of you guys, especially if you're selling like, again, B2C or low B2B like I discussed earlier, is Instagram, since it allows you to tackle more opportunities through the use of stories, written content, links, DMs, etc. But realistically, regardless of the channel that you're using, make sure to simply stick with it and focus on paid ads and relevant content inside of that one channel. And most importantly, make sure that your ICP hangs out in that platform, if that makes sense. So the next way in which you can grow your auto converting funnel is with YouTube call to action. So what I do is that in every single YouTube video description, what I say is join my free Facebook group where I share special trainings and resources or DM me the word access on Instagram or Twitter to get the doc used in the video. Boom, super simple. Okay, and the way I like to do it with YouTube call to actions is simply by either links in description, links in pinned comment of every video, and by actually saying in every video that they can get access to the document by going to the group and the auto converting funnel. Okay, similar to at the beginning of this video that I said, hey guys, if you want to get access to the document, boom, boom, come to my Facebook group. Okay. So now that we're done with that, let's talk about the auto-converting funnel, okay? Because all of your traffic sources will send people through this funnel. There's passive auto-conversion and there's active auto-conversion, okay? The way you set up your auto-converting funnel matters a lot, okay? And by passive, what I mean is that the prospects by themselves get auto-converted. If we were going to pay for eyeballs, we want to maximize the journey our leads go through so that we need to make sure to give enough opportunity to our leads for them to move across our social media channels and get trapped like a spider web almost, okay? So regardless of the profit that you'll use for client acquisition, here's what you will need to set up to make sure that you allow for auto-conversion. Number one, your YouTube channel. Number two, your Facebook group. Number three, your client results. And number four, uh, forte resources or foundational sales letters, okay? Think of this as the guide section inside of your Facebook group, essentially, where you simply add like a catalog of stuff for people to consume and fall in love with your solution. Super simple. Um, if you were to use Facebook, if you were to use Instagram, here's how I would set it up. If you were using Facebook, here's how I would set it up. If you're using LinkedIn, here's how I would set it up. The feature post really, really key. It's like the highlights on Instagram. On Twitter, here's how I would set it up, etc. Okay, so that was the passive auto-conversion. Like people go, go there and like you saw in this little diagram in here, this setup sends people through the pin BSL, the Facebook group, the YouTube content, the resources, the client results, and this, sends, this basically starts a content flywheel that, again, sends people all over the place, like we discussed previously. That's the passive part. Let's talk about the active auto-converting ads. And the most powerful use of our auto-converting funnel and, and ads is the active component, where through the use of the FSLs, we can not only get email leads sending us DMs, but more importantly, immediately deliver the FSL that will do the heavy lifting for us when it comes to converting them to simple engager to book call in our calendar. Make sense? So what we're going to do is that we're going to run the ads. This is going to make people, uh, I mean, we, we're going to get DM requests, messages. Also starts the passive auto conversion. On top of that, once we get that request, we are going to start the appointment setting flow. Upon starting the appointment setting flow, we're going to deliver the FSL. And this, remember, equals the gamma ray burst. 
And then all of this makes people end up booking meetings and ultimately becoming clients, okay? I will leave a separate video on our entire appointment setting process, the combo framework and all of that good jazz in, in the link in the description, okay? So no worries about it. But both in the active and the passive workflows inside of the auto-converting funnel play a synergistic role inside of the conversion process. The passive one is done by the prospect or slash follower on autopilot, while the active one is done through the delivery of the FSL, which adds up even more to the speed and effectiveness of the overall sales process through paid advertising. And note, you can always leverage more specific micro VSLs that are relevant to the pain points of the lead that are specific to them, making our messaging much more powerful since the more time goes by and the more assets we create, the more content ammunition we'll have to further move leads through our sales process, okay? So for example, you can always deliver and you should always de deliver the FSL, but let's say in the process of the conversation, you, say, just, you know that the prospect says, hey, my biggest issue is booking appointments, for example. Yeah, your FSL should touch that, but not only that, if you have a separate video that is specific about how to book more appointments for fitness coaches and the prospect is a fitness coach, send that one. Makes sense? Super specific. As you see, even if nine times out of ten the FSL is more than enough to get people on the phone, assuming that you have adequate appointment setting skills, the reality is that sometimes some leads will have very detailed objections and that's when situational micro video sales can be quite handy since they will demonstrate the prospect how some specific features inside of your offer are the solution to the problem that they have. And what this looks like in action is like this, like people, someone engaged on my ad, which was this one, and the simple ad makes people send a DM request, like you saw here, then we simply add the lead to the CRM and continue the combo appointment setting framework. So I say, hey, Matthew, hope you're doing good. This is the action plan, et cetera. For context, are you starting an offer, et cetera? And I start the appointment setting flows. And then um, I follow it up, like you should. Okay, so that's essentially how you're going to build the auto-converting funnel. And as a bonus, I want to show you how to leash appointment setters and convert leads to clients, okay? Because the goal of your appointment setting efforts is to convert attention into booked appointments. And this attention either comes from your organic content, your paid ads, or your initial album prospecting efforts, okay? And there's a weird trend on having setters slash growth specialists or growth teams, etc., generating attention and doing the actual conversion on behalf of the entrepreneur slash the offer. And in this video, I talk about why that's stupid and it does more harm, harm than good for you. And, and the setter, okay? For example, if you're an appointment setter and your boss doesn't run ads, it's stupid. Unless he's doing a whole bunch of album prospecting by a BA or he himself or whatever it may be, then it's stupid to have you doing the appointment setting and doing the album prospecting, okay? You should dis distinguish this, those two things, okay? All of this attention generating vehicles generate attention, then appointment setting, what they, what appointment setting does is convert the attention into calls. In uh, starting to say what, what to message and who to message, it's important to understand when to message your leads because that's what you need to create your opportunity channels, which is what will allow you or your setter to understand the opportunities to engage in new conversations and or follow-ups, okay? So for example, for paid ads, the ways in which you're going to go about starting conversation is in an audience building ad, when you get a new follower, a new connection, or a new friend, on a DM ad, when somebody requests a DM, in a BSL opt-in, when somebody opts-in. Simple, right? On organic, every single time you get a group join, every single time you have a content engager, right? Now, I will not touch over this because I will just, uh, I mean, in the document, you can see like complete description on how it goes about the appointment setting process. But again, this video is way too long already, so I think that I will just leave it here in regards to that. But you can find a separate video where I go deep into this process, so no worries about it. But I really want to talk about one part, which is, yeah, you can delegate this process to an appointment setter, but and what I want to do with you guys is help you find, hire, and train rockstar appointment setters because otherwise I will not be keeping my promise of actually helping you automate this process from A to C, okay? I could write a separate FSL just on this process Process. instead of making a 100 page Google Doc just go ahead and watch the following videos on how to manage appointment setters and BAs and be careful about not making these appointment setting hiring mistakes when you start doing this and there's a video that you can watch about the typical appointment setting hiring mistakes that I see people making especially coaches and consultants who think that appointment setters are going to solve their appointment setting problems but listen at its core, hiring commission-based appointment setters is the sexiest thing nowadays, but let me give you a golden nugget your appointment setters are not going to solve your appointment setting problems Okay, most people hire a setter out of pure desperation, but if you don't even have enough leads to either by an organic audience or by running ads, you'd be better off staying in the organic valuation phase till you're able to feed enough leads to your setters to engage via paid ads. Okay, so um, please do it. Yes, you can have your setter reaching out to call DMs to prospects and book meetings, like a lot of people recommend nowadays, but both your setter and you will be still broke since that's BA level activity. Okay, so let me tell you something. If you're in the organic valuation phase, Please do me a favor. You, sh you should have just one prospecting BA or two or three or whatever you want that is doing the album prospecting while you just take that attention, that positive replies into book meetings. You, okay, you, the person, the founder watching this video, okay? If you're able to run ads and have a proven process slash script, you can have one appointment setter per up to 
40 DMs or 40 new leads per day or more. Okay? And remember the principle. Your setters convert attention. They don't create it. And if you know you're not ready to run ads yet because you don't have a budget, if our clients can book three to four calls per day organically through album prospecting plus content and $1 per hour BA, you can do it too. You can see Nishkar, she's one of my clients, the one of the cases that I have at the beginning, by the way. And he literally said it. He's booking minutes like never before. And he now believes that he can easily book three to four sales calls from one single BA. Don't underestimate this. Like if you're having one BA that is getting you through Abund 10 to 15 CRM ads per day, what is going to happen is that, yeah, you, you got to message those 10, 15 people. But tomorrow, you're going to have another 10, 15 people and follow up with the previous day. And every single day compounds. Make sense? So it's actually quite easy if you get this right. So go back to organic valuation phase until you start making enough money to invest in ads and then come back to this part. Okay? So guys, a super quick summary of everything that I covered so far in this video. Step one, you craft your foundational positioning through the identification of painful problems inside of your niche. Then you build a foundational sales letter that yields massive con conversions and immediately cuts through the noise. Step two, you validate your foundational positioning to organic methods first, since it's free slash cheap. And if you already have a budget for ads, I would recommend at least 1K minimum. You can skip this step and go, step, go straight into step three. And yes, you can get results with less than 1K, but I would much rather play, play it safe knowing that 100% of the time you'll, have, you'll be raw as positive and that requires a little bit higher budget, good closing skills, and a strong organic foundation covered through the foundational sales letter, of course. Step three, you will install our proprietary funnel and, and ads and start distributing your FSL at scale while at the same time running out this building ad to build your personal brand and make the sales process even more frictionless. And step four, which is a bonus, unleash a commission-based appointment setter that fills your calendar on autopilot. Okay, guys, next steps. I know that this is the end. So I will not, not do the typical, uh, okay, you have two cases, two scenarios. You can do it yourself. You can do it together. Guys, honestly, if there's one thing that I learned after three years of being in the game is that brand Goodwill and reputation are the real unfair advantages that you can have to stand out from the crowd. So even if this document that you read right now, or even well, or this video that you watched so far, was the only piece of interaction between you and my company, as long as you learned at least one single insight from the content inside, I would still consider the titanic effort that it required to build this process or this document and this video a success, okay? And listen, guys, I promise, the process that I just broke down is an actual step-by-step -step blueprint that you can apply, get results, and then use the profits to come and work with us, okay? I literally want you to do that. I've always said that most businesses don't have a marketing or sales problem, like I said at the beginning. They have an operations problem that prevents them from executing on the systems and the actions that predictably generate the outcomes that they are looking for. And that's the mission that we're trying to solve at Royland. So, of course, I will not charge you for this information. Go ahead and apply it. Try to do things yourself. Win if you want to. If you want to partner up with us, there's a link in the description. You can, I'll be happy to walk you through what that would look like. So, of this, instead of this process taking two to three years, the time that it took me personally to figure all of this out and perform a KPI, and you're blindly pushing forward, let me break down exactly what we do, the outcomes you get, and what it looks like to work in action, okay? And you can just go ahead and check the BSL with the link in the description. But essentially, we're going to do don't for you paid advertisement. We're going to make sure that we help you plan the organic content to make sure that everything works. The FSL, the funnels, the paid ads, the creative, all that good jazz. We're also going to do don't for you appointment setting. And it's not just like the recruitment. Hey, here's the appointment setter. Manage it and book meetings, hopefully, and we'll cross our fingers. Is we literally manage the appointment setter for you, okay? It's literally everything done for you. And all we need for you in exchange, if you want to partner up with us, is that you're actually good at sales and that you have a validated offer organically, okay? So follow this process to validate the offer organically and what you're looking to scale, work with us. Super simple. I think that is a good deal, honestly, okay? And if you're not there yet, go ahead and check what the other low-ticket offers I have um, look like so that you can still get our support but not have to do a high-ticket commitment. If this was helpful, share with someone, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel. And I hope that this one is really, really helpful. I genuinely hope so. If you have any question or whatever it might be, go ahead and leave a comment down below in this post or in this video, whatever it might be, so that we can just address it before you make any sort of decision. Okay, guys? Love you all. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your attention. I don't give that for granted. And thank you very much for everything. Okay? Speak soon. Bye.